You have been a trustee for the um, Natural Resources Defense Council since 74, 75, 74. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously a big part of your life, and I want to go back a bit farther, and, um, and we'll get up to that point. I to hope you. so, yes. 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 <laughs> Was there still live, dramatic television in prime time, and did you get in on that? I did. It was great. I, I got in on the very end of live television. To me, that was the excitement of that was how chaotic and immediate it was. I just loved it. You did uh, Broadway. You got rave reviews for your work in Neil Simon's Barefoot in the Park, which you later did on film, too. Did you enjoy theater, live people in the audience? I did. I, I loved the theater. I loved the excitement. And there was always a wonderful moment for me, and that had to do with a kind of kind of an odd privacy that there was all this noise, you were backstage and they were seeing everybody get ready and there was a hustle and bustle and you could hear the audience backstage and the microphones. And then there was that great moment where the curtain went up and people calmed down and boom. And when you went on the stage, you were in your own private space and I, I always enjoyed that. You um, got your big break in the films with uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I had a real connection to the Sundance Kid for reasons we don't need to go into, but the, the, I went up for Butch Cassidy. And so George and I went to a bar on Third Avenue and <clears throat> I said, I will, would be happy to play Butch Cassidy, but that's not the part that interests me. And that intrigued him. And the more we talked and the more we drank, the more it came around to him seeing that. But the studio wouldn't have anything to do with it because Paul was known and I wasn't. And so therefore, it was a long, hard battle that Bill Goldman and, um, and George Ray Hill fought on my behalf. And finally, Paul stepped in, which will make me forever indebted to all of them, particularly Paul, um, to stand by me. Because the studio said, no, he's an unknown. It, it's not fair to put him against Paul. So anyway, George, who knew Paul, realized that there was a side of Paul that a lot of people hadn't seen that was more appropriate for Butch Cassidy. So he convinced Paul that he should play Butch. Then the original title of the, of the screenplay was The Sundance Kid and Butch Cassidy. That was the original <laughs> title. So, so when this came about and Paul decided to play Butch, why it was switched. After Sundance, you worked on projects that seemed to emphasize quality over star power, uh, Downhill Racer, Tell Them Willie Boy Is Here, Jeremiah Johnson. What made a project worth doing for you? Story and character and the uniqueness of the story and if it had to do with American life, whether it was American history or the present situation that we're in, in other words, what, what are the forces that affect individuals in our society that weigh against the ability to remain an individual or to be one? That was one of the themes. What were the, what were the forces out there that, that were dishonest, that had to do with what we were given as slogans? When I was a kid, there was a slogan about, because I was an athlete as a kid, and there, there was a slogan, um, it, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, but how you play the game. And I found out that was a lie, that everything mattered as to whether you won or, or not. When you joined the National uh, Resources Defense Council, was there a particular issue that galvanized you, that just made you <laughs> to get involved? A lot of things came together about my, my childhood and my background. You know, it was a lower working class neighborhood in Los Angeles. There wasn't a lot to do. So the environment, whatever was handy, was what you could go and do. So for me, it was the ocean and then the Sierras. And I worked at Yosemite National Park and, and I, as, a, as a kid. And, and when I worked there, I got, I got exposed to some of the most majestic um, power I had ever experienced. It was real and it was live and it was there. And so I think that's where it started. And then one thing led to another. <clears throat> I became very active in 1969. And in the earlier years, um, there was not a big population of environmental activists. And so you were up against tremendous odds. I needed to consolidate my energies behind a group that I felt had the most power. And that was NRDC because they had the power to sue. They had the power to go to court. I just felt that was the place for me to be and I've 
felt that way ever since, and I feel that way even more so today. On Election Day 2008, a couple of things <clears throat> happened. One was the Obama victory, but also the Bush administration formed a plan to auction or lease over 100,000 acres of Utah's Red Rock Wilderness to oil and gas companies. Tell me about <clears throat> Red Rock in Utah. Well, I mean, first of all, it's an area that I have very personal attachment to because I spent a lot of time there with my family and, and I, I hiked it and ridden it. And, and so I'm very, very familiar with it and I have very strong feelings about its value. Bush, on his way out, um, did probably the, pretty the smarmiest thing you could imagine, which was while the election night was going on, he delivered this edict where he says he's going to open up uh, 360,000 acres in southwestern, southeastern Utah right through the National Parks and Monuments area for oil and gas leasing. And he was trying to slide that in under the radar. It's like a midnight signing in or something. And so uh, I just happened to get wind of it, and I thought, God, you get on it fast. You get word out, get to the people. Because I, I had faith that if people knew that was happening, and anybody that had been through that territory, even if he hadn't, if he'd seen it in film, you would know that this was an incredible American asset that was about to be wasted for some short-term gain. So it was like get out there and, and using NRDC to help <clears throat> get the word out. The judge made a right decision and put in a restraining order saying there wasn't enough environmental impact on it. And now it sits with Salazar to see what he's going to do with it. So we have to work on Salazar to make sure he recognizes that that land is public land. It does not belong to this administration of the last one. It belongs to us. And uh, <clears throat> look, I know that NRDC has a lot to do this evening, so, um, but I, I believe in NRDC, and I, I think that the, this wouldn't be here. They wouldn't be the group they are without the membership. They wouldn't be the group they are without the collective power of people believing that they have an organization that can represent their interests, which is the public interest. So that's why I think it's important. So I think that the more people can step up and say, hey, we're not going to let you, we're not going to let you trash our heritage, it's, it's our land, and so therefore we want to protect our land. You should be doing that for us. You have maintained a home in Utah for quite some time and created the Sundance Film Festival, which takes place in Utah. Why did you decide, hmm, Utah would be a great place for a film festival? Because I couldn't afford anything else. <laughs> The uh, American Film Institute came out with their 100 film heroes and villains. And you have two roles on the list. The Sundance Kid and Bob Woodward from All the President's Men. <laughs> We're speaking tonight on um, June 17th. And every Washington oh, reporter knows June 17th. This is the 37th anniversary of the Watergate break-in. Wow. And which led to um, a president resigning and you making a movie. And, um, and the movie did uh, two, at least two good things. It alerted a much wider audience to what their president had been doing, and it made journalism cool. When it came out, I wasn't prepared for its success. What I also wasn't prepared for, since I, I did it because I thought, this is a great opportunity. I, I get to play a part in a... A, a very high glory moment for journalism and to celebrate the power of journalism's role with the First Amendment. And to me, that was a, a, a civic gesture that I was able to make with film. What I didn't imagine was that journalism schools would be filled with people who wanted to get into the schools for glamorous reasons. Thank you for a lifetime of entertainment. Uh, thank you for Sundance. Thank you for your activism on behalf of saving the planet. And thank you for this evening. Thank you.